Over the next five days, I'm going to go from not knowing a thing about Flask to writing a full stack application, which includes a front end, back end, and a database. The website will be able to log in and log out users, create notes that will persist through a refresh, as well as being able to delete those notes. We'll also be able to show links based on whether or not the user is logged in. Right now the user is logged in, so we don't want to show a logged in link, but we do want to show a log out link. Each day I'm going to spend a few hours on each topic, record what I learned, and then give you guys a final report at the end. I've heard great things about Flask, so my hopes are high. In terms of resources for learning, I'm going to follow this Flask tutorial from Tech with Tim's channel. So shout out to him for making the video. To supplement this, I'm also going to be looking at the book Python Distilled by David Beasley. This is actually one of the books that I covered in my five must read computer science books. So go ahead and check that video if you want. Also, why did I choose Flask over Django, which is the other popular Python web framework? I chose it because I hear it's more lightweight it's easier to get things up and running quickly. And for a small project like this, I felt like it was the better choice. But who knows, maybe I'll make a Django video in the future. Learning Django in 50 days. All right, welcome back. Um, let's just get right into it. So uh, day one was all about setting up and understanding the project structure. So first I created my virtual environment, which if you're new to Python, a virtual environment allows you to encapsulate your application dependencies at the project level, kind of similar to a node modules folder in node, if you're familiar with that. And today was mostly about creating routes and views, which brings us to our first Flask concept, which is blueprints. A blueprint allows you to separate your project into different segments. So you could have a blueprint that's in charge of authorization, like logging in and logging out users. And then you could have another blueprint, which allows you to have CRUD operations in your database, like creating and deleting records. So inside of our init.py folder, this is, this is where we register all our dependencies. We see we register a blueprint for our views. So this is gonna be all our pages that we're gonna be showing. And then we have a, another blueprint for our authentication. So if we go to our auth.py, we see if we go to the login route, all it does is returns a raw string of HTML that just says login. So this application is running on port 5000. So if we go there and we go to localhost 5000 slash login, we see that it is just printing out login. Obviously we're gonna expand on this in the next section. All right, day two was all about setting up our navigation bar at the top here, setting up our login as well as our sign up page. We did also import bootstrap into our project. So if you are wondering why it looks kind of nice, it's because there is some styling there. So this brings us to our next technology, which is Jinja. Jinja is a templating engine, which allows you to write quick and reusable front end components and it's Flask's default template engine. So if we go to our project and we go to all our templates here, the cool thing about templates is right here, we write our nav bar and you can see the different links here like home, logout, login, and sign up. And then what you do is you just reference this base.html in your other pages. So you don't have to rewrite the code. In our home page, we see that the navigation bar is there but we didn't have to write any extra code for that. So that's the power of templating engines. You can also have program control statements like if else, you can have for loops, you can check if a user is logged in. So it definitely gives you a lot of power than just writing HTML. So like I mentioned, we do have this login page, but all it does is it just prints it out. So if we log in here and we go back, we see that it prints the email, sam at sam.com and our password. So it doesn't actually save anything because we don't have our database set up. So in day three, we introduced a database to create and authenticate users. And if you're interfacing with a database in Flask, you're gonna wanna use SQL Alchemy. SQL Alchemy is an ORM or object relational mapper. An ORM is a library with predefined functions that make it super easy to query a database. So instead of having raw SQL strings all over your code base, you can just use a function. And the main benefit of this is if you ever want to change your database, you just change the connection string and then you don't have to change anything else in your code. So in the code, we just imported SQL Alchemy and created an object. And then we set the 
database URI to this string here, which for this, I'm just gonna be using SQLite. I really like SQLite for testing because you don't need to worry about connecting to a database. And then once you want to use a more heavyweight database like Postgres or MySQL, you just change the connection string here and everything should work the same. So we also have this models class here, which defines the table schema in our database. For now, we just have our user model and then we have our note model here, which we're gonna worry about in on day five. So if we run our project and we go to the SQLite Explorer here, we see that we have a table for user and notes. And if we want to query this table, we see that we have nothing in here for now. So if we go to our app and we go to the sign up page and then we just put an email address, put our name, and then we just use, we just generate a password here and hit submit. So here it says account created. And if we go to our database and we query again, we see that we have this email password and first name here. And then if we go to our login page and we try to log in, we see that we logged in successfully. So the main issue at this point is, yeah, we can log in correctly, but all it does is it just checks if the user exists in the database. So we need to use a Flask module called Flask Login, which allows us to handle all the user management, which we're gonna focus on in day four. So day four was all about user management and I was honestly shocked at how easy this was. With just a few lines of codes, I was able to do things like log in and log out a user and make certain pages viewable only if a user is logged in. So if we go back to our login route, and I know I didn't go over this code before, but basically what this does is when someone logs in, it gets the email and password that the user provided and checks if the email exists in the database. And it also checks if the password that the user gave is equal to the password in the database. And if it is, all we need to do is add this one line which logs in the user and then it sets this remember equal to true. This is just so if we close the page, it'll remember that the user is logged in. And then for logging out, all we need to do is add this one line, log out user, and that's all we need. And login and log out user are from the Flask module here that we imported up at the top. So to prove that this is working, let's go to our login page and let's pull up the Chrome developer tools. And let's go to the applications tab and let's go to our cookies. And we see we have no cookies here. And if we hit log in, we see, boom, there we go. We got a session created. And if we you know, refresh the page, we see that the session is still intact. And then if we log out, we see the user's logged out and the, uh, the cookie's gone. And then, like I said, if we go to our views, if we go to our root and we add in this login required decorator, then we can only access this page if the user is logged in. So right now we're not logged in. If we go to, so if we go to this route here, we see that we can't access this. It. it says, please log in to access this page. If we log in, we see we are now at the home page. Another thing is if we go to our templates and we go to our nav bar, we see we can also do an if statement based on if the user is authenticated, then only show the home and log out links. Otherwise show the login and sign up links. And as you see here, we're logged in and we only see home and log out. We log out, we see login and sign up. All right, so at this point, our app has very basic functionality. All we can do is create users and log them in. Obviously there was a lot that goes behind that, but uh, let's add a little bit more functionality. So now we see we are logged in, so we have access to the home page, and then we have this notes text field as well as a way to add notes. So let's add a couple things here. We'll add hello and then we'll add world. And then we also have the ability to, if we hit this X, to delete a note and we see we just have that one left. So what does this look like in the back end? So if we post to our home route, we see we get the text here and then we create a new note object and it sets the data equal to the text that we wrote. And it also sets the user ID to the current user that's logged in and the current user's ID. And then it just adds and commits to the database. That's pretty much it. For delete note, it gets the note ID. It gets the note from the database based on that ID and then it deletes and commits the note and then just returns an empty JSON object. And that's uh, pretty much it. I mean, it is pretty basic, but at the end of the day, a lot of applications, what are you doing? You're gonna be able to log in and log out a user and you're gonna have to write and read from a database. And, and that's pretty much what we're doing here. So this is actually really good kind of like boilerplate or, or starter application for pretty much any app that you wanna write. All right, final thoughts. So there's definitely a lot that I like about Flask and there are definitely a few things that I dislike. It's very tightly coupled. The front and the back end are very tightly coupled, which is fine for small applications, but I can't see a large company 
using Jinja and Flask. Most likely you are gonna wanna use a JavaScript framework like React or Vue for the front end. So if I did want to convert this, I would have to, cause right now on the back end, we're just returning uh, the HTML templates. But if I wanna interface with a JavaScript framework, I'm gonna have to convert that probably to JSON. You'll probably also have to implement your own login system. Uh, you might have to convert, I don't know if you can use Flask login. So you might have to convert to using JWT. But overall, I, I did like it. It, it. It's always hard to tell with a small application like this. You can't really tell what the limitations are of a, an application. Uh, until you get to a bigger project. So yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts and comments. Let me know what technologies you'd like me to cover next. Um, if you haven't, I did a video on learning React in seven days. Uh, if you wanna check that out. These videos are always fun to make. So if you did enjoy it, leave a like because I do look at the likes on a video to determine whether to do similar videos like that in the future. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and keep on coding.